So in this video, we're going to be setting up a follow camera for our player so that when our character moves around, the camera stays on the player and we'll be able to see different parts of the environment based on whatever the camera is pointing at in the background. So what I'm going to be doing is taking this generic RPG slice tile and we'll just repeat it a bunch of times. So we can use one of the UI nodes in order to do that. So normally you would use a tile set and tile map, uh, but we're not really focusing on that in these videos. So we're going to just do the simpler background texture. So we can go over here to node control, and then we want texture rect. You can also search texture rect in the top bar. So we'll put that there and make sure that it's behind our player, the barrels and the end by making sure that it's actually at the top of the hierarchy, whatever's lower is going to render on top by default. Now we need to put a texture image into our texture property. So I'm going to drag the slice, I'm going to put it in here. And uh, now we can see that little icon. We want to expand here and we want to tile. So I'm going to take the stretch mode and set that to tile. And now we can just drag this as far as we need a background to be just kind of like so. And, and maybe for now, we want to duplicate a few more of these barrels in the level. So I'm going to control D duplicate it. And now that we have barrel three selected automatically, when you do the duplication, you can hold alt down and then left click on the stack and it's going to move the currently selected object from the scene hierarchy. So it guarantees you're going to move barrel three rather than barrel two. So holding alt down is very helpful, especially when you have two or three items in the stack. So here I'll press barrel four, hold alt down, and you can see I grab barrel four out from the stack. So let's grab barrel five and move it around, just kind of position everything kind of how we might want it. We might want to duplicate the end as well. So I'll just duplicate that and I'll move it down here. And you know what, we can have a third one as well. Why not? And I'll move the player a little bit more in the center of this map. Okay, so now let's actually give the player a camera in this map. So I'm going to right click on the test map and I'm going to create a camera. So type in camera, we're looking for camera 2D. So this camera, uh, first off, we want to make it the current camera so that it's active. I'm going to check active on the camera and you can see that it's positioned up here, but we want it to point at the player. So we have to give the player something so that the camera can point at it. So right click on the player, add a child node, and then under node 2D, we're looking for a remote transform 2D. So this can basically tell a camera where to point at, and I'm going to create it on the player. So this has the transform sitting right on top of the player. So as long as the camera is pointed at this remote transform, then it's going to be effectively looking at the player wherever the player moves, because as a child node, the remote transform is going to move with the player. So in the remote transform 2D, we want to assign the remote path to the camera 2D. So just like that, you should see camera 2D pop up there and the camera 2D's position now matches our player. And so we can see that uh, the level is actually quite small. So I'm going to stretch the texture rectangle background some more and just make it so that we'd actually have to move the camera a little bit in order to start seeing the gray space again. So let's save that scene and we can hit play. And this time when we move our character, the camera is going to be pointing straight at the character. But when you build your levels, you're probably not going to be trying to make them indefinite. Uh, they'll have a set size. And when you get to the edge of a map, you don't really want to show this gray background, right? So in order to handle that, you can set limits to your camera. So I'm going to click on camera 2D. I'm going to go to the limit category. And we need to basically set some points for this limit. You can see that currently it's set to negative I don't know, 10 million or something, which basically means effectively infinite. But if we change it to something like negative 200, then it's going to be much closer to over here. Um, so I could just take these and set it to negative 200, negative 200, 200 and 200. And then that's going to make the limits somewhere around here. But it's kind of hard to see what you're doing without enabling some visual gizmos. So in the editor category, you can check draw limits and here you can see the limits I just set up. And basically the reason why the camera had to move here is because if it tries to point at the player, it's already outside of bounds. So the camera can't move any further than the limits, which is what you want. So now we just have to adjust these limits so that it actually matches our map. So I'll take the right and make it something like 500, 525. Let's go with that. We can leave it at 500 for now, maybe 500 for the bottom. Okay, that's way too much. Let's make it Let's make the bottom 300 or so. 
Okay, maybe we can make that a little higher, 325. And then we just need to adjust the left and the top as well. So perhaps we're looking more at negative 100 on the left and then zero on the top and okay, negative 125 for the left and 100 on the top. Negative 100 on the top, and that's a little too much. So negative 75. Okay, there. So now the limits of our camera uh, do not go outside of the map that we've built, uh, which is usually going to be what you want. So instead, what you might have happen is when you get to the edge of a map, you could transition into a different map. I'm going to hit play, and we're going to go ahead and test this camera real quick. Okay, so we got a little level here of the objects rendering on top of the background. But you can see that when we kind of get to the edge over here, it's uh, not going to be moving the camera any further. Our character can still walk past it because there's nothing to collide with our player and stop it from moving past that. So same with the bottom and same with the right. So if you do want to stop your player from being able to move outside of the camera limits, you could create a quick object, a static object that would block it. So for instance, I could right click on the test map here add a child node, and this would be a static body 2D. And then in that static body 2D, we can add a collision shape 2D. So the static body provides the physics and the collision shape provides the area where you would collide into. And then in this collision shape, we can give it like a rectangle shape. Let's take the static body, move it up here. And then with the collision shape, we just stretch that to basically be the full top of our map. So we could do that a few times, maybe once for the left side, once for the right side, and once for the bottom side. And now we just need to adjust the size of these rectangles. But if you try to adjust the size up here, uh, there's one problem, which is that all of these are actually sharing the same resource. So in order to adjust these individually, you got to right click on this rectangle shape and choose make unique. So when you do that, now, when you adjust this, it's not going to affect the other ones because this is its own thing. So let's just position this down there, drag it up, okay, right about there. And I will do the same thing with this rectangle shape. We'll shrink it, position it down here, drag it up. And yeah, right around there, we can get the collisions for our level. Now, the fact it overlaps over here doesn't really matter. It's nothing we're ever going to see. Uh, what's important is that we just block the player from being able to leave the map. So let's go ahead and hit play and we can test this real quick. Okay, so we'll go to the top. Okay, and he's blocked there. He's also blocked down here and at the bottom as well. So in this case, I was duplicating the collision shape 2D. So this does work. You can have four collision shapes on one body, but you could have also just duplicated the body and then had four separate objects blocking the player at these areas.